Hello there, and welcome back to Slain. Today, we're going to be going through these sewers in order to finally get into Old Town. But, uh, don't be too dismayed, the sewer level here is actually pretty good. A sickening plague flows through the tunnels and drains of this vast subterranean labyrinth. To safeguard his citadel from interlopers, Vol has littered the passageways with deadly contraptions and diseased sentinels. So as that little text blurb stated, these sewers are littered with all sorts of traps. The trap density here is much higher than it was in previous levels, and that's what makes this level one of the toughest in the game, in fact I'd say it's the second hardest after the final level. It also introduces a few new traps and enemy types, and is actually one of the shorter levels in the game, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. So all that, plus the great aesthetics of this level, make it a rare example of an actual good sewer level in a video game. As for these pods here, you want to break them quickly. If you give them time to hatch, they'll, well, hatch into spiders, which will crawl along the ground. They're not too threatening, but they can be a bit of a bother if there are other enemies about. So best to just take them out before they hatch in the first place. There's also this block that you can push here, and another one, and I'm not entirely sure why they're there. They have no use as far as I'm aware. I guess maybe you could use them to impede the horde of ghouls coming at you, but it's not like they're all that threatening of an enemy type, so again, I'm kind of mystified by that placement. Anyway, here we have another one of our giant ghoul friends who we deal with in the usual manner. This stage starts things off fairly tame, with just a few traps and a few basic enemies, but don't worry, it quickly ratchets up the difficulty. It ratchets up the difficulty enough to the point that this stage is responsible for the greatest number of deaths so far in this Let's Play. Here we're introduced to a new trap, the Piston. It's probably the least dangerous of the traps by far, because it is incredibly easily noticed, and it's not really fast enough to be more dangerous than the other traps. And here we have another trap that we've actually seen before, but was introduced in just this stage, these green spear traps. The only tell that they're there is that faint green glow on the ground. It can also be easily mistaken for an enemy warping in spot, and it can just be difficult to see in general thanks to the green aesthetic that the environment goes for. Far more dangerous are these wall pustules that periodically spew poison homing balls at you. These poison spheres are not hindered by the environment at all, they'll simply pass through everything and will only break when hitting you, so uh, better make sure that it's your sword that they hit and not your body. Thankfully, the pustules themselves only take a single whack with the sword to take out. Although magic is also useful since you can take out them and their projectile that they spawn at a distance, which makes things a bit easier. Having dealt with our ghoul friend, we now descend down this elevator here to a rather dickish trap on the developer's part. If you don't head right first, you are guaranteed to die in the next part of the level. You need to hit this switch in order to not die in the next segment. And if you don't know that, well, screw you, you gotta do it again. Thankfully the checkpoint is not too far away, so it's not too huge of a dick move. But still. As for what kills you, well, I think you can guess that. You can make it this far without hitting the switch, but that door will be locked if you haven't yet hit it, and so you end up getting crushed by the spike wall. Not terribly pleasant. I suppose now I should also bring up the fact that I haven't been showing off a lot of the death animations in this game. To be fair to me, they're not hugely varied for the most part, but there are some pretty good unique ones. I think probably my favorite is getting eaten by one of those ceiling-bound creatures. Those are the ones that hang above those red glowy things that we've seen upon the ground so far. But the way I see it, that's just more impetus for you to purchase and play the game by yourself. Support the developers, friendos. Anyway, here we have a mob of poison skeletons led by a skeleton slave master who's fairly annoying to deal with. They only have one move whacking with their whip, but it has a fairly tricky parry timing and they move backwards quickly enough that you can't really do a charge attack against them either. It's just parrying and then doing the critical strike. Thankfully there's good news and that's the only one we'll ever encounter in the entire game. 
Unfortunately, there's also bad news following that, that there are several not yet introduced enemy types that are far more dangerous than they. In fact, one is right here. At least I don't believe we've seen this enemy type before. These are basically upgraded gargoyles. Rather than just shooting a regular old fireball, they shoot one that explodes and leaves a huge flame AoE on the ground. Which makes them far more dangerous. Thankfully, they're not any more durable than the regular gargoyles. Just two full attack combos is enough to take them out. Really though, they're not too threatening. In fact, I think the most dangerous thing in this room would be those wall pustules. Just because they fire those poison spheres pretty fast. And they just home in on you relentlessly as we've gone over before now. This level sure does love its giant ghouls, doesn't it? I think it might be something of a last hurrah for this enemy type since if I recall correctly, they don't show up in any of the future levels. Although I could just be misremembering. Actually, thinking about it, that's a fairly likely possibility. I've already recorded the rest of the game, and when I did my pre-recording practice run just to make sure I knew the level layouts well, I realized that I had actually forgotten a lot of the final levels of this game. Basically, an entire level and boss were just kind of eclipsed from my mind. Getting back to matters at hand, you probably noticed that our health is quite low at this point. None of the enemies thrown at us in this section are particularly difficult. The issue is that it just throws so many of them at you. And it's just such a long section between the checkpoints that it's very difficult to maintain a high amount of HP unless you play perfectly. And of course, not playing perfectly will get you dead. So, uh, returning on a more successful attempt. Not the next one I should note. Anytime you see a cut between deaths in this video or any of the remaining ones, just assume that there were several completely failed attempts in the meantime. This is the level where the game finally takes its gloves off and it shows. But with this checkpoint we come to the final segment of the level. Now there are technically several checkpoints in between now and the end of the level, it's not just one huge gauntlet that you have to go through. But I think of everything that remains as its own unique section since it actually has a much higher focus on traps than enemies than we've seen before, even in this stage with its high prevalence of traps. During this section there aren't any higher tier enemies thrown at us, it's all lower tier trash. But the so-called lower tier trash actually end up being more dangerous than the tougher enemies simply because they're always placed around traps. It doesn't matter if something can be destroyed in one hit and does no damage to you if it knocks you back into an insta-death trap. Case and fucking point. Now, something I want to bring up that I think I've touched on briefly before but have never gone into any great detail is the overall visual design of this game. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the game looks fucking great. But in a lot of cases, that great looking art actually ends up hampering the gameplay. It makes things more difficult for you in a rather bullshit way rather than a legitimate one. In some ways, you could think of it as the polar opposite of the art design of the classic 80s and 90s platformers that this game is inspired by. In those games, graphical capability was fairly limited, and so anything that appeared on screen had to serve some sort of purpose. A gameplay purpose, more specifically. If it appeared on the screen, it was either an object that you could pick up, an enemy that you could kill, or something you could platform on. There were background details as well, of course, to make the walls more immersive with the technology that they had at the time. But the limited nature of that technology also meant that those background details tend to be pretty distinct from the ones that you could actually interact with. So you could easily tell at a glance what something was and what you could do with it, how you could interact with it based on your character's verb set. Whereas in this game, everything is so highly detailed and just kind of mushed together that even though it looks great, it's oftentimes difficult to tell apart a background object and something that you can actually interact with in the foreground. The same issue that AAA developers have been running into with the increasing graphical technology as of late leading to some doing things like putting outlines around items that you can interact with such as in the latest Deus Ex games. So yeah, that was a rather lengthy diatribe. The gist of it is is that even though the art in this game does look great, it sometimes leads to a bit of difficulty with the platforming. It's sometimes tough to tell what's a trap and just what's a detail on the floor. And in some of the levels, such as the one we just did, there was such a high density of traps that it can be sometimes difficult to pick them apart at a glance and figure out how to avoid them, making it easy to get caught in them. 
So, uh, getting back to what's actually occurring on screen, our boss here, the Mother Beholder, is somewhat distinct compared to previous bosses. Previous bosses were largely humanoids that you didn't avoid, you blocked, you parried, you attacked. The Mother Beholder, on the other hand, is basically one large projectile all on her own. You have to avoid touching her or else you'll take contact damage. Not a huge amount, but every little bit counts, especially in this fight. She also periodically spits acid balls at you, which you can deflect back at her to deal a bit of damage, a bit more than your sword strikes. But the real threat in this fight isn't from her directly, although she does cause it. After you damage her enough, she starts growing pustules on her body that start dropping eggs all over the place. These eggs then hatch into the small beholders that we've seen before. The lesser beholders then act as they always do, flying about the place, damaging you on contact, and spitting their own acid balls. Now, none of the beholders by themselves, or even the mother beholder, are all that threatening individually. The danger comes from you, late in the fight, being overwhelmed. Eventually, the mother beholder's rate of production becomes fast enough that you can't really take out all the beholders before they've spawned. You may even have trouble taking them out after they've spawned. And eventually that leads to you being overwhelmed with all sorts of hurt boxes that you can't avoid taking damage and eventually you just die due to gradual HP loss. So yeah, this fight is quite a bit different than previous ones where you would die due to the enemy's powerful attacks, but it was one single enemy that you could focus on. And if you died, it was just due to you mistiming something, not because you got overwhelmed centrally. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a pretty welcome change. It's a different challenge to deal with in a boss fight rather than just another melee dude who can parry and then critical strike repeatedly. But yeah, that's it for the Mother Beholder. Sadly, we'll still be seeing more of her Beholder children in the future, but for now, I'll leave you off with the hag. Next time, we venture into Old Town.